Hello and welcome everyone once more to our wonderful story of Coyote and Crow. We are joining with our players once again in the middle of their investigations into the fabulous performer Ischia and clearing his name from spurious rumors. And with that, I will turn, I will let my wonderful players introduce themselves, starting with, let's go with uh, Kichika. Just making sure that my mic is working. Hello, my name is Bo. I use they, them pronouns. Uh, and I am just a dorky teacher on the internet. Uh, you can find me everywhere uh, at dorky teacher, except for on Twitch, where it is just dorky teacher. And I am playing Kichika, Path of the Crow. All right. And we I will <laughs> go ahead and pick it up from there. I am Mistress Winter. You can find me on all socials at G Mistress Winter. Uh, you can find me on this channel, on Heroes and Hooligans, Hunters Entertainment, all over the place. And I am playing Nathan, uh, the life doula and path of the fox. Hi, I'm Casper. Um, you can find me everywhere at wolfgirl2525, um, and I am playing Anizi, or Zizi, um, and they are a Path of the Raccoon. And I will pick it up again. I am Logan Bowes. I am a story guide. I am a writer, editor, a bunch of things. I am descended from the Absaliga tribe. And today I am running a story of my own devising called either What's the Damage or The Price of Honesty, depending on several factors that we'll get to at some point. Now, last week, our players found themselves called to assist a prominent city figure uh but more than that let's go with um i know bo's running tech so how about you nathan <laughs> how about you tell us what happened last week sure sure well we as a favor to our, our new friend each uh we set out to find the truth of his innocence or guilt as it may be, which led us to find that the deceased, the victim, Saka, uh, Sakati, um, had been a former colleague or, or partner of Isha uh, some years back and had been found uh, dead and mummified inside a wall of an old uh, community shelter that they had shared. Uh, we managed to convince the watch to investigate the area, look at the body, and we even helped with the investigation as we were able to talk our way into a nearby apartment uh, and talk to the resident, an elderly gentleman named Nizaka, um, who told us a little bit more of their history. And we also found clues as to the uh, Sakati's murder in that apartment uh, some many years ago. Um, we were subsequently arrested. <laughs> or, excuse detained. Me, oh, detained and arraigned. <laughs> Telling everyone uh, it was arrested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we were just, we're definitely uh, arrested. Um, yeah, Zizi was taken aside by a constable uh, under questionable sus suspicion i guess uh it was totally a, a racism thing uh or na nationalism nationalism thing tribalism nationalism tribalism. okay yeah yeah so not really racism just nationalism um and i mean it's all bad <laughs> which left uh Nathan and kichika to talk with the uh lieutenant who 
questioned us about our involvement, and then we convinced her to deputize us. Excellent. And with that, we will pick up with ZZ because they had to leave us so early. You are taken aside. Um, as I recall, you were very, yeah, no, we'll do this. We'll go. Yep. And your bravado actually seems to dishearten, um, not dissuade, but definitely kind of rocks your interrogator back just a little bit. Um, you are taken into another room for, basically, they give you all the questions again that you had to answer to enter Cahokia in the first place. Where are you from? Why are you here now? What's your involvement with this? And at every step of the way, he is literally badgering you. He is, are you sure? If there's nothing else, you can tell me, you know. Um, but this only goes on for about five minutes before uh, the door is all but thrown open and someone says, Tower Tack wants her. No, Tower Tack wants her now. Tower Tack wants them now. And although the constable puts up something of a fight, you are quickly led to Tower Tack, and the constable who was interrogating you is uh, in an, a room aside. It looks like the equivalent of a bullpen. It's a wide, circular room, lots of places to sit, and is very clearly parked there and waiting as you are led into Tower Tack's office to rejoin Kichika and Nathan. What's up, guys? Um, Tower Tack, right? Yeah, my name is Tower Tack. Hi, um, I'm ZZ. It's nice to meet you. I just wanted to inform you as a concerned visitor that some of your constables have a hearing problem. You might want to get that checked. A hearing problem? I'm... Ex I brought you in because I wanted to apologize about your treatment thus far, but... It Tell me more about the hearing problem. Oh, it's just that guy. And I point out to the one who's been talk, like who, who held me and like was badgering me. It's like that guy asked me the same questions repeatedly. And no matter what answer I gave him, he kept asking. So, I mean, I would call that a hearing problem. I'm not sure that I would, but you seem to be a kinder person than me. <clears throat> now, as I was talking to your friends here, it seems that you're involved with the, you are more involved than I would necessarily have liked with uh, the Ischia case. And I was just discussing with them how they could aid us in a more official capacity. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd be down. Do we get badges? Actually, yes, we've uh, seem to have been deputized by the lieutenant. Ha! So cool. Wait, can Tops get one too? It's not so much a badge as it is a credential downloaded straight to your Nisi. So unless Tops has a Nisi, no. Makes a note, <laughs> get Tops a Nisi. Perhaps you have a, a small token that uh, the pet can wear. Kijika? Hi. Um, can I also get a token? Uh, my niece I immediately regret is, this. is really like it's. It, uh, me and electronics don't do well. Um, like, if you got, like, I don't know, like a pin or, like, a cute hair thing or, I don't know, like, some other, like a bracelet. You're not a constable. You are doing this under my personal, let's call it, uh, sufferance. Give right. me a moment. She hits a button on her desk, 
and you're privy to a call with her secretary where she calls for actual paper. Uh, the city of Cahokia does have paper documents that we covered last time, but it's not it's really more of kind of a collector's and a niche thing at this point. It's not something that most people just have hanging around. You can find books like most families will have a couple, maybe, but most everything is just available digitally. Um, so eventually there is a uh, paper brought and you watch as she writes it out and dusts up pulls out a box that clearly hasn't been used in a while, pops it open, dust flies. And there's a little stamp and she puts her stamp on it and she hands all of I... you these little <laughs> letters and then Analog, sighs baby. very deeply and rips a paper in half and rips it in half again and takes the little quarter paper and writes another in a much smaller print although she's clearly just scribbling at this point and puts her little stamp on it and hands it to Tops. And there's a look on her face that very clearly wonders what has become of life. It's all going <laughs> all right. And now she's deputizing a raccoon. Things have clearly gone wrong. <laughs> and she does not know where that was. <laughs> I give, I give uh, Tops a high five. Um, as they wave a, they wave their little paper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Will there be anything else that you need? I with the understanding. Too, right? Yes, you all got paper. Okay, okay. I think top. that that should be sufficient. Perhaps we should, you know, turning to the rest of them, I think that we should uh, leave the lieutenant to her. Wait, does, does the, I, did the lieutenant give us clues? Uh, did, did you guys get the clues? Because they kind of blocked off everything. We can discuss this uh, as oh, okay, we cool. go. How about some food? I'm, oh, I'm I like feeling food, something. yeah. I'm, I'm feeling some some yeah. food. Yeah. Uh, we can talk over some some grub. What do you say, is Tops? Tops is pretty much gonna climb on me and like just chitter. He's like, "Yep, we want food." Very well. Thank you, Lieutenant, for your trust in us, and we shall not abuse it. That I can assure you. Thanks. Also, yeah, remember <clears throat> hearing hearing aid. I'll take care of it. Hmm. Very she makes good. a very distinct uh, motion for you to leave. Hmm. As you leave, you see that the um, officer in question is let in, and the door does not close before you hear her absolutely explode. <laughs> um, it is very loud. There are many expletives, and anybody with even a hint of empathy knows that she is taking out every bit of frustration she's had in the last two weeks on him. Well, uh, let us not get cost in that blast radius. Let's, let's go find some food. Now, restaurants in Cahokia do exist. They work just a little bit differently. Um, most of them are places where you go to be with family. They're places where you go to be with members of an uh, adopted society, a community. You are essentially being invited into the chef's home. Um, private dining experiences aren't exactly a thing um, for that, for what we think of as like coffee shops. There's no coffee. There's uh, Yapon Holly, which I'm sure I'm still butchering, uh, which is a similar kind of tea but um, anyway, in most cases, when you go into a restaurant, you are invited into the chef's uh, table, basically. Well, you know, actually, I do have a pretty decent cooking score. We could just go back to my home. Yep. Okay. I will message ahead to 
my assistant, if we ever came up with her name. <laughs> Did you come up with a name? Uh, nope. Quick. Oh, I think no. I On think the table, we did. Go. I, I think we did. Uh, Seekin. S i k a n. Yeah, Seekin. Seekin, you shall find. Yeah. I was gonna make the same <laughs> pun. <laughs> uh, so yes, I'm gonna call ahead to to Seekin. Um, uh, yeah, boss. Yes, um, we are gonna have some guests over for dinner. Uh, would you mind running out and grabbing? Uh, Enough food for tonight? Or uh, four, what is enough food? Or five. Four? Five. five. It, yourself included, of course. Uh, yeah, I'll save for dinner. This is very clearly like, no, he was going to anyway, but he is just. <laughs> uh, absolutely, sure, 100%. I will grab uh, things for dinner. Yes, yes, I will. I will absolutely grab Thank things you. for dinner. That is what I am going to do. I appreciate you greatly. And then I will invite Kichika and ZZ to dinner. And Tops can come too as well. <laughs> so by the time you get there, Seekin has uh, gathered the things for dinner. There is a heavy emphasis on fruits and candied sweets because Seekin, as I recall, is a bit younger. Um, it's clear that since you did not give... Uh, directions he literally just went out and got everything that he wanted for dinner that uh, uh mm -hmm. since you so kindly volunteered to make it for him sure uh i'm going to <laughs> survey all of the com uh ingredients that he collected and just muster a you know what this is a lesson learned <laughs> Uh, kind of like little internal sigh. Uh, thank you, Seekin, for uh, collecting the ingredients. Uh, if you will, please entertain while I get things prepared and put together. Oh, yeah, I can do that, boss. Immediately while you start cooking, Seekin walks out. Hi, I'm Seekin. I'm, uh, I'm Nathan's assistant, and uh, I can do magic tricks. Tricks. How old is Seekin? Just uh, Seekin is let's call them seventeen. And um, why am I imagining a six-year-old? Because <laughs> he's very enthusiastic. Very enthusiastic. They can do magic. <laughs> okay, uh, Seekin can do magic. Okay, carry on. <laughs> um, well. I can make all of you think the exact same thing right now. Look, 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 look. See this? See this hand? Well, should bad because you should have been watching this hand. And he holds up. Um, let's go with Kichika's wallet. Hey, give me that! <laughs> give it back! <sighs> oh, I don't have it anymore. I gave it to uh, the raccoon. Do you, you want to? Get Tops to give me back the. Tops well... is busy. Yeah, Tops is busy like looking through the wallet for any kind of money or anything, anything shiny. Besides, I think uh, your friend over here is going to be more worried about um, whatever this thing is, and he's got your passport. Um, that's not funny. <laughs> um... Oh, but it was funny when it was uh uh, Ichika. You tall one. Kichika. Kichika. I'll be taking that back now. Here you go. Hands Thank it to Kichika. <gasps> I'll trade you. Fine. Tops, give it back. See? And just like that, you both think that I'm really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly just surprised at how you did that. Can you show me? Absolutely not. Uh, can I? In fact, uh, please don't tell Nathan because it. it yes, you can uh, give me <laughs> a. Let me double check. Um, let's go with Skullduggery. Yeah. Skullduggery. 
Okay. I think Skullduggery is your option here. These, this is a D12 game, right? Or I'm rolling yeah. D12s? You are rolling a number of D12s equal to your Skullduggery skill plus either your Perception or Charisma, whichever is higher, if you have ranks in Skullduggery. If you don't, you are rolling whichever is lower between Perception and Charisma. Copy your success that. number is eight. Wait, I just got to get my dice <laughs> my bad boom uh all right it's one no crack cracker jack one two three four um so i got an eight uh an 11 a 12 for the skullduggery and I got three perception so do I write do I roll three more die you have ranks in skullduggery right yes I do so you roll the ranks you have in skullduggery plus the ranks you have in perception okay one two three and I got another eight a nine and a ten so reroll that 12. You're already at six successes. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, it's just a three. That's still a seventh success. So, <laughs> um, yeah, before with that many successes, you have whatever you want from Seekins pretty much before you tell Tops to give it back. Cool. Yeah, so I, I'll have his wallet, his notebook, if he's got one. Basically his, like, his backpack if he carries one. Yeah, and I think that's good. I was going to say, seven? Yeah, you could even have his pants. I don't care. <laughs> I draw the line. <laughs> it's like, I'll leave him with the clothes on his back, and that's about it. So, yeah, um, you literally say, whatever, Tops, give it back as you open his backpack. Yeah. Um. How did you I want to be mad. <laughs> I, I want to be mad. But I, I'm kind of impressed. And uh, what say you give that back and d don't tell uh, Nathan and we'll call it square. Uh, sure. Don't take my stuff again, please. He I still nods. don't know how you did that. I want to know how they did that. <laughs> Trade secret. Raid? Trade, are you I'll see there? you at the meetings. Okay. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, like, uh, all this sweet-smelling... Uh, aromas? Aromas, yes, thank you. Uh, just kind of wafts out of the kitchen. Uh, that because that's the five successes on cooking. Yep, it lost you. It is. Uh, sorry. So it will be a uh, minute longer, it will be a few minutes more before the cooking comes. And actually give me one moment as uh, Kichika and Zizi talk for just a second. Okay. So, uh, Zizi, did, did they like, uh, was it just that cop that was like being rude to you or, or they didn't do anything to you, right? Well, he just kept asking me the same question. So, like, when I when I came here, I had to show them my passport and basically ask, like, what am I doing here? Like, the purpose of my visit and all this other stuff. Yeah, I gave them those answers, and he just kept asking me again, like, if I was sure or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I'm not dumb. Like, I know why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Like... Yeah, but what did I miss? Like, 
did they do anything cool with you or did they did you get asked a lot of questions too? <sighs> Uh, yeah, uh, sort of, uh, I kind of tore Tau Attack a new one, um, oh. for detaining you. Oh, that's what that was? Yeah. Um. Oh. Apparently, not, not all of them were so, uh, keen to detain someone, uh, just for where they're from. And, um, I don't know, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the constabulatory, but like, there's something oh, they're about terrible. attack. <laughs> yeah, she seemed cool to me. She gave, she gave Tops a, a badge or this thing. So that seemed nice. She seemed nice. Yeah. And it also seems like it took every ounce of her dignity to do so. <laughs> so... Good job. <laughs> so, okay. as you're discussing, um, Nathan will finish cooking. Uh, we're going to go with um, roast duck with some very nice fruits and vegetables you had at the house because, like, hell is Siku and going to get what he wants. <laughs> Gotta eat your greens. Um. <clears throat> He is, you have to kind of get his attention, which isn't unusual because he is exactly what he seems like. Um, and after that, he will help you bring dinner out and set it around. And um, as you're actually, yeah. And then dinner tastes delicious. It's one of the best home cooked meals you've had in a long time. Uh, at least ZZ, definitely. So going back to our conversation about uh, clues and this investigation, we didn't get any more from Lieutenant, but I have a feeling that we're ahead of them anyway. So that's why we have been granted this uh, responsibility. That should be concerning. Well, we advocated very vehemently on, well, our and your behalf. Well, I'm just saying from from a citizen's perspective, if, mm. if three civilians have more than the constabulatory, that's, that's not good generally. But anyway, so what do we got? And ZZ's like, uh at at the what do we got um tops like projects like a whiteboard so zz can start like this murder board situation <laughs> that is that is very handy yeah so these <clears throat> are the clues that we've got <laughs> uploads it <laughs> and they pop up very weirdly hand drawn like stick figure things of like of the notes that ZZ was taking before <laughs> a bloody what is this one here <laughs> that is the chair that had the blood on it um oh. and then uh they these were the notes and that's what it said um what else that looked like a rain cloud the corner of the projection nearest to Bo to Kichika flickers and refuses to stay on. Yeah. Um, this that happens. Ig ignore it. It's fine. That's normal. As soon as Kichika steps mm. away, it solidifies. I'll, I'll be back here. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, Very good. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this is This is what we got. Um, that's the wrong book. Yeah. All right, we've got a dead body. Um, it was in fine robes. We know who it is. Um, he got stabbed a bunch of times, like a bunch of times, mm -hmm. by a super, super like sharp blade thingy. Yeah, um, a Nietzsche blade. Yeah. 
like which are really expensive um and he was not a nice guy and like when i say when he's not a nice guy i just have a stick figure of like a blue robed gentleman with like a bunch of stick like circle heads that are just angry eyes at him and they're all red and just like <clears throat> it's like yeah um he owed somebody a favor um, he owed a Kichue a favor yeah and they are a rumor monger i don't right? have anything to add to that one yeah and then hmm, there is an old photo with the residents when they were like younger and, and in point of fact, ZZ, you can actually make a skullduggery check. Um, no. Success number eight. Okay. Mother trucker, get back here. There you go. Uh, skullduggery. Am I adding my perception or wisdom, or wisdom to it? Whichever's higher because you have ranks to it. I got a nine, a 10, an 11, and a 12. Rerolling that 12, I got nine. Okay. Easy so killing it up in here. <laughs> with I'm that so many successes, <laughs> you have actually met a Kichiwe before. Wait a he second. was, um, the name took a minute to, but when you found Rumor Monger, and when you're looking through your notes, on your niece, um, something strikes your memory. And what reason you had to go to him or he to you, I'm going to leave up to you. But you've met him in person. He's very flashy. He's very uh, uh, stylistic. But he is not a rumor monger. He is an information broker. A small but crucial difference. Yeah. Wait a second. There are also other rumors about him, um, which I will actually send to you. Since you got a six successes, I will give you one more piece of information. Um. Yeah, so ZZ's looking at this rumor monger and, like, the picture that, like, was there, the old picture. And I was like, wait a second. I know that guy. Uh, he, he's not a rumor monger. He deals in information. He's expensive. Um, yeah. We could go talk to him, but it's going to cost. Hmm. Maybe there's something else we can barter with. Uh, as I, I'm certainly in my, my pockets are not full of, uh, and is it an easy? An easy. An easy. Yep. Yeah. As much as people need doulas, it is not uh, a money-making business. Yeah, I don't really have much going for me right now anyway, either. Um, no, I mean, like, he's he barters in information. If we have information mm. that's interesting, he might be able to uh, well, work something out. We did just get deputized by the constabulary. And... Sure. You know, but, unless we suspect a Kichue, in which case then, you know, then maybe this is a bad idea. But we could offer, you know, an ear to the ground on the investigation. And actually, that could be a really good way, if we do suspect a Kichue, to, like, actually, like, feed in some false information to see if, like, they act on it. And then, um, if they do act on it, then we know that they are involved somehow and got him. Yeah, okay. So he's also, there's like whispers going around that he's a former Suyata. 
Um, yeah, that's a bad idea. Yeah, I wouldn't want to lie to them because, like, I've never heard of a former Suyata, so. And that is concerning, but that would also tell us that they have the skills in which to discern false information. Uh, yeah. Our best approach may be just to be honest and to see what kind of information that he would uh, or they would be interested in. Yeah, and, and if you have anything that, like, looks valuable or interesting like i i wouldn't go and meet him with tops is what i'm saying like i'd leave tops behind because like these guys are serious do you think they would have an interest in tops well i have an interest in tops so they would have an interest in tops you see ah uh. Yeah. Oh, well, what? Is... Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say. So what you're saying is I should leave these here, and I take out like my mind enhancing drugs, and I'm just like, these should stay at home. By the way, are those in like pill form? Is it like a uh, what is it? What do they look like? I would say it's probably powders. Honestly, powder. yeah, just just my very nondescript bag of powder. And I'm like this. This should just should leave that. Should probably leave that at home, right? I mean, if if you really don't want to lose it, yeah. yeah. But it would could come in handy. Yeah. Um, could be. Yeah, maybe I should bring it. I guess. These these drugs are they uh, illegal or are they good question commonly used? So I imagine it's a little bit like um, I imagine it's a little like Adderall where they're prescribed and um, They are probably prescribed and allowed under certain circumstances. It might be a little looser what those certain circumstances are, but um, addicts come in all flavors. So uh, it's probably at least a social taboo to have as much as Kichika is packing. Okay. And Kichika, I would request that you refrain from discussing your proclivities in front of my assistant. Oh, the, I mean, it's cool. Like, I, I don't, it's not like all the time. It's just like, you know, I take like a teen, it's, it's this really cool put new away. thing. Put, put it away. <laughs> what does it do? ZZ looks at you with a new respect. <laughs> um... I like glance at Nathan and I'm like, you know what? We'll talk about it later. I'll hold you to that. What's your phone number? I don't have one. So you can go clean up the kitchen, please. Looking at your gigantic <laughs> one. But, <laughs> but I want to know. This is information that you do not need. Of current. What? Please? Go clean up the kitchen, please. I never get to learn anything fun. Hmm. Are just... there pronouns? He, him. I mean, he's what? He's like just a little bit younger than I am. He'll be fine. He'll be good. It's not a big deal. Gotta find out about the world eventually, Neaton. Yeah! That may be. See, see, Ken? I can't hear you. I'm doing dishes. Mm hmm. Very clearly, like, listening at the door. Yeah, of course. No one home but us, Jenkins. Uh, see, Ken, 
is impressionable. And no, I'm that, not. That is not a part of life or the world that I am in, in a position to introduce him to. And I would prefer that any illicit dealings be kept outside of my house. I said it was illicit. I didn't say it was illicit. I, I, and why do you I feel the need to it. divest yourself of it? Because they're expensive. Mm -hmm. And do you use these by prescription or recreationally? Well, that's none of your business. That's between... <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. It's between me and my dealer. Yeah. <laughs> between uh, me and, uh, and uh, my... Uh, these are some very invasive questions <laughs> for Listen. people we literally just met yeah. yesterday. And you know, yeah, it's it's not a big deal. Like I said, it's not like I'm not I haven't taken anything yet. You know, it's just like a you know, a little bit here and there, and it's not like I take a full dose. It's like a little bit, and then that little bit like kind of just. It's I, everything kind of, because if I don't, well, then everything's kind of not, you know? I am not judging you for using, whether recreationally or medicinally, I am simply requesting that it not be a topic of conversation around my assistant. Fair, but wouldn't you rather they learn about it? around you than <clears throat> from random person, not me, random person anywhere else. So at least I you can like frame hmm. it and give like, because you're a doula, you know about this stuff. I do. And uh, before I can explore such sensitive topics, there has to be a foundation of intentional thought and critical thinking, being able to control one's impulses. And Seekin has not achieved that yet. That's a lie! <sighs> Honestly, I don't disagree with you there. That, yeah. So what you do with your, your body, your life is your business. That is correct. But I ask that we not uh, have others age up before they are ready for. Do you think I am? <laughs> um, that sounds like this whole time ZZ's kind of zoned out and started like was going over the clues on the wall mm -hmm. or in the projectant because it had nothing to do with them so it was like oh so um does that mean we're meeting uh the the, the scary one um at, at, at... Kitsu, right? yes Kitsu. can you can you get us a audience with this information broker? Um, you know where he's going to be if he's in town. Yes, I could. If your assistant could babysit cops. I think that is a good possibility. All right. Not anxious about that at all. Um... I'm sure Seekin will have much fun with tops. I'm not worried about Seekin. Um, <clears throat> oh. Hmm. I, if we're going to do this, we should do it soon because, like, he doesn't really stay in one place too long. So, and, like, I know where he might be if he's in town. So, like, and we would have to meet him tonight? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. No. 
It's probably best. Yeah. Okay, then yes. <laughs> Disregard. Yes. <laughs> you would have to meet him. Yes. Uh, are we, like, in danger? Like, should we be, like, be trying to go in there ready to, like, fight our way out? Or is this, like, a... Is this just a conversation where, like, the consequences are probably, like, we get kicked out? Or, like, am I risking getting beat up here? Uh, it depends on what you say, because conversations can go, you know, either way. Um, I would say, since this guy is an information broker, um, if you don't want anything known about you, don't bring it up. Oh, done. That is not my primary concern. My concern is our physical safety, as I believe Kitrika was alluding to. Well, we'll be, we should be fine. I haven't had a problem. Where would we be meeting this Akichiwe? A courtyard in the Cheesy District. And what do we know about the Cheesy District? It's a marketplace, depending on where in the district you're talking about. It's either an open market, or it's an illicit market, or it's a floating market. Um, If we are going to make an appointment with this information broker in a in a neighborhood rife with crime, then I suggest we find a way to defend ourselves if need be. Um, with the circle this guy runs in, if you come in armed, he's not really gonna talk to you. Mm. So it's best if we just go in, friendly face, um, ask him about some things, offer up a payment, then get out. You know, keep it simple. No one gets hurt. No one gets offended. Because it would be kind of rude to walk up into someone's business, like, waving weapons around. That's, it's, it's not polite. Um, no, but I think it would also be foolish to not have protection on hand should we need it. I mean, I can go. If if you're feeling that like apprehensive about it, I can I can scout it out maybe and like yes, let's back. split the party. I would not send you on your own. I've that... met up with him before. It should be fine. Not with something that with me. specifically concerns him, though. Mm. Right, because I'm assuming all the other things were more self-serving, whereas we're actively trying to learn more about someone who uh, they're involved with. Yeah, as long as we don't outright accuse him of murder, we're fine. Yes. Come on. <laughs> You're a big brother. We can go talk to him. Okay. I'm sure this will go well. I'm very good at talking to people. Oh. Very well. Um, do keep in touch and let me know if you need any assistance. Open comms the whole way with uh, tops. So hmm. you'll have an ear in um, unless he shuts it off, but because he might do that too. But it's fine. We got Kichika's backup system. They won't even bother with that. It's really, really old. At this point, I, I don't even know if it does anything. I just keep it because people <laughs> look at me weird if I don't have anything. I'm going to... You know? <laughs> if it's all right with you, like, ZZ's going to try and open, like, make it where it can, like, continuously, like, have an open comm link with Nisa. On mine? 
yeah on yours <laughs> without it like frying <laughs> like com completely frying the cpu <laughs> uh, you so can give it a try <laughs> i've tried to fix it okay so give me a cybernetics roll oh, yes. um now normally that goes off of uh either intelligence or wisdom whichever is higher but this case i want you to use cybernetics and wisdom to make your pool copy that and it's a success number 10. i have a bad feeling about this <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, you've been rolling incredible lately, so... Oh. Don't jinx it. Oh, that's true. I have terrible luck. Well, if it wasn't a 10, I would have done very, very well. Oh, no, <laughs> I, got, I jinxed it. I, I got an 11. Oh, a that's one success. 11. <laughs> okay, so as you watch, uh, ZZ pops it open very carefully. Or maybe very cavalierly, because it's easy. Oh, I got this. <laughs> Feeling good, you know. <laughs> Might not got this. No, I totally got this. Um, you've never seen the kind of damage in this thing before. Um, some of it shouldn't physically be possible. Like, there are there are things in there that are missing pieces that look like they've disintegrated. It shouldn't turn on. But you basically MacGyver it to keep power by remembering the old saying, uh, keep it simple, stupid, and just going as far back to fundamentals as you can think we're talking the equivalent of like making a circuit breaker out of a penny like <laughs> and you hand it back and you're like don't jostle it too much or at all don't breathe at it don't even look at it but it currently works for what you need i give it a day <laughs> that's fine you don't need it to last too long but we that's should why go. we should go. <laughs> that's why I I don't want to touch tops. Tops seems great. At a distance, tops is gone. Yeah, yeah. But like in general, oh, don't want to touch tops. Seems where like where a bad is idea. tops? <laughs> where is tops? Not nearby. I thought I didn't do it. gonna peek into the kitchen to see if uh tops is in with seekin um seekin looks kind of confused and scared but tops has the toaster broken open <sighs> and you're not really sure what what's happening but you're either gonna end up with a really good toaster or you're gonna need a new one I have a feeling I'm going to have to re replace all of my appliances by the time the night is over. So... No, no, it's really cool. Tops asked me first. I think he asked. Uh, he looked at me and then he spat. But then he broke it open and then he put it back together and then he broke it open and then he ate part of it. But I think that might have just been toast stuck in there. Uh, well, there goes the warranty. Uh, See, Ken. Uh, it can you prepare the meditation room, please? Uh, it, uh, right now, I'm I'm busy. He is it, literally just watching tops. Yes, no. Thank you. Fine. Go prepare the dumb meditation room. You just sit there. Can't you do that anywhere? Why do I have to prepare it? Why do I have to light the, the things? It is training for your future as a doula yourself isn't the whole Is point the... to center your mind 
yes, but it takes discipline. And part of the physical action helps you to discipline your mind to get into that state. I think it's just to give Seekin more work. Hmm. He's mumbling as he goes off to do what he's told. He's actually very good at it. He's just very, he's a teenager. Yep. <laughs> and I'm just going to eye tops <laughs> as he's like. Mm-hmm. Just, he gives you a thumbs up and a finger gun and goes back to what he was doing. Please don't break anything beyond repair. Thank you. Again. Raccoon noises. <laughs> All right, I will leave tops to whatever he's doing. Yeah, we're we're gonna go find we're we're yep. We're gonna go find the storyteller. Yeah, you are splitting the party. Yes, we are. Yes, well, we are. yes and no. Um, I'm uh, the reason I had Zeke and prepared the room is because while they're going physically, I'm going to walk the black. Mm. Okay. <laughs> now, I don't remember exactly what works. goes <laughs> into using that particular ability. Yeah. So describe, while I'm uh, looking up the particulars, go ahead and describe. I want to know what you're trying to do with Walk the Black, first of all. So uh, Walk the Black, I am projecting myself or kind of following uh, Kichika and ZZ on the spiritual level, uh, invisible and maybe able to perceive things that they can't in the physical. Whether or not I'd be able to communicate with them in the moment, that would be. Okay. So. Spend a point of mind and a point of soul as you do whatever Mm -hmm. ritual you do to get yourself in the mind. Mm -hmm. And then make a will check. Uh, So that is just straight up the the stat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Oh, one success. One success is enough. So it sounds like you're deciding to stay in reality outside of your physical body, correct? Yes. Now make me a charisma check. Ooh, okay. I think that's the same roll. Yep. Ooh, two 12s. Yeah. Reroll them. Another 12. Wow. Reroll it. And a 10. Okay, so altogether, that's six successes. So that means you have all five senses and some extra. So while you are walking the black in this way, you are also under the auspice of Hawk's Eye. Ooh. So you leave your physical body and experience weightlessness um and you're going to need to make at least another charisma check but because this lasts for 1 hour mm. it's difficult but you can do it uh you are unseen you're unheard you're incorporeal um And yes, you can, in fact, uh, basically, you can catch up to them before they even hit the Yutsu train. Awesome. Yeah, uh, I get settled into that meditation room, you know, familiar uh, incense and candles and whatever other ritual components that I have 
uh, that I use regularly to quickly drop into that meditative stance. Uh, and I just kind of push out through reality and uh, seek out the, my younglings <laughs> and uh, just kind of hover nearby. So um, with, so at the, uh, I want both Kichika and Zizi to make me a, trying to decide. Performance skull diverse. I want you to make me either a stealth or a investigation. Stealth or ceremony. Checks. All right. Just a straight stealth check? Yep. Cool. It's stealth plus, uh, anytime I call for a skill check, it's stealth plus either whatever relevant stat you have that's higher if you've got ranks in it. So in this case, that's agility or will. And the standard success number is eight, right? Yes. If I don't tell you something different, assume it's an eight. Okay. I got three successes. I roll a 10 and an 8, and then two ones. I rolled Done one nothing. one, two 11s, and a 10. So you got two successes. Ah, okay. Yeah. Forgot one cancels one out. So, Kichika, you feel like somebody is watching you over your shoulder, and you turn, and you see some guy just staring at you on the bus, and he gives you a look like, hey. I give whatever the uh, Cahokian equivalent of the finger to this man. <laughs> <laughs> he seems uh, upset, but doesn't seem like he's going to bother you further. Mm, ZZ, idea. you can't shake the feeling that there's, that someone stepped over your grave. You just feel like you're being watched. It's going to wear it coolly. Like, yeah. Just, we're good. You see that guy? What, uh, what guy? That guy, what a prick. Just oh, like, that one? gave me like a call me kind of sign. Yeah, the, the, you look down. It's like any public tra You always look down. You never make eye contact with people. I mean, I didn't mean to. I just was like, you know, looking. Yeah. And I happened to be looking in that direction and then like focused on what I was actually looking at. And there's just this guy that's like, hey, I'm like, no. So it's not far. It takes you about. 10 minutes on the train once you get there. Um, after the bright lights of the Nabonimo district, the cheesy district feels like stepping into another world. At this time of night, the crowds are almost non-existent, but even so, people from all over Makasin quietly walk the streets, each moving with the dedication of someone on their way to do business. You make your way through the narrow streets and roads of this region, finding the small open area in front of the address that Zizi knows as Akichiwe's. Here, a man sits recumbent on the edge of a fountain, a slight grin on his face, as if he knows a secret that you do not. Um, <clears throat> before we go in, kind of want to do a little thing. So just like, stand behind. I want to activate my deer smile, because I don't want to die. <laughs> Um, Make your rolls. Yeah, it's charisma. 
and well. Can you remind the rest of the class what the deer smile does? Because I don't remember. Uh, it basically may encourages folks around me uh, to be calm and peaceful. Hmm. And... Okay, so I got two successes and spending of the points. And uh, so we'll make a note of that. And as you walk in, you see this man recumbent on the edge of the fountain, a book in one hand, which he closes and stares at you with a smile. Lovely to see you again, Zizi. And Kichika, it's a pleasure to meet you. How's your sister this evening? Uh... And he just turns and looks over your shoulder and winks. Directly at you, Nathan. And yeah, with that, that, that I definitely takes me back. A little bit. <laughs> and with that, I think we're going to go ahead and take a break. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yay, Cliffhanger. Great. Love, it. <laughs> Love that. Love that for us. All right. Yeah. We'll be back soon. See you in a bit. 10, 15 minutes, everyone. Yeah. 10 minutes.
went on the train to meet up with the storyteller. Um, uh, I can never remember his name. Uh, <laughs> Akichiwe. There we go. Got it. Uh, where we went to meet up with Akichiwe and uh, Nathan decided to join us via Spirit World. Um, uh, Kichika got flirted with by a guy, unwanted, um, and then complained about it the whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> then we made it to the market, and um, well, we made it to Akichiwe's place. And uh, he introduced himself to me, who he's met before, uh, Kichika, who he's meeting now, and Nathan, who we didn't know was there. So, <laughs> yeah. And it's super freaking creepy that he could see <laughs> His eyes dance with mischief. And he smiles a hungry smile as he sits up. Well, you come to my door. I think it proper that uh, you tell me why. Um, who are you talking to? Is it, is it me? Oh, his eyes are moving between three points. Okay. Um. Well. I don't know what you're looking at, but, um, so you know that, um, oh, I wrote it down correctly too. Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, we, we, uh, there was a murder and, um, Ische, it, right. I said his name right, right. Okay, cool. East Jay was accused of it, so he gathered a bunch of us um, to, like, clear his name, because he's not a murderer. Um, we found out that the victim person, guy who got murked, was uh, Sakari. Um, and, yeah, there was an old photo of you in his place when we talked to the old guy who was across the hall. Um, and so we just wanted to ask, like, how you knew Sakari. This is, it's it's just an inquiry. We're not accusing you of anything because obviously you didn't murder the guy either. Um, so yeah. If I had murdered him, you would not be here asking about it. Yeah, exactly. That would be very dumb of people to like come to you if you were the murderer. So. It would be it would be foolish to step into a coyote's den full of plump, juicy meat with no backup plan and no exit strategy. He stands up and stretches lazily. But all of this is uh not what I asked for. I did not ask for exposition. And something that's important to know, if you're going to tell a story, you must tell it well. The beginning, the end, and the middle, such as the parts where you are now working with the constabulary. We are? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, he, they, they agreed to... Uh, I was not in the room when that happened so and if apologies. i searched you i would not find a letter of uh authority from constable tower talk you would absolutely find one but i was mostly getting i i mostly wanted one for the raccoon tops is adorable yes can i help you kitika Sister, how do you know her name? Oh, did you say Mr. or Sister? Sister, Sister. I make it a point to know as much about people as I can, especially 
people looking into things I have an interest in. After all, a story is only as strong as its uh, weakest link. Even the bit players can matter in the grand scheme of things. Hmm. Did, did I hear you correctly? You have an interest in this story? I do. Ischa, I would like to help Ischa. Not because he is a good man, not for because he is a healer. All of that is of no consequence. What does matter is he is of my tribe. We are both of the, of the Absalaga. And much like family, you want to see your tribe mates do well. But again, I have now answered one question for you, and you've left mine completely unanswered, aside from some simple exposition. Oh, I'm I'm so sorry. Uh could you do me the courtesy of reminding me what the question was? Because I got nervous and forgot. Oh, why are you nervous? There's no cause I'm... to be nervous between old friends. Well, I'm bringing new people and, like, I don't know how they're going to react. Well, a new person. And so I want to make a good impression, so... He seems like his eyes settle on yours for a moment, ZZ, and he stares into them. And then he smiles, and he lets the smile drift upwards, just past your shoulder. And he makes a shrugging motion, and then turns once more to Kichika. Now I said, what do you want what do his shoes look like <laughs> his shoes are they are very they're not new but they are very well cared for they look as if they are very road worn but rather than buying new shoes, he has patched them up over time. And you can see that it's been done by hand. There is stitching and thread, and he has opted for a uh, very strong looking black thread rather than actually working that into the beading pattern or anything like that. Um, in fact, as you look, you can see that uh, these used to be uniform boots. Um, but at this point, they're so road-worn, if you didn't have the habit of staring at everyone's shoes, you wouldn't have noticed. We want to know what the debt's about. Ah. You want a story. I love stories. I can help with stories. And I'd be happy to tell you a story. But I think just this once, we'll skip that part. And we'll cut right to the one where you tell me a story first. Seems a fair trade. Because all stories matter. Some are. True stories cost more. So, one among the three, I'm sorry, two of you, go ahead and tell me a story. Something, hmm, he seems to think for a minute. I want to hear a story about greed or a story about loss. Mm -hmm. At that, 
eth ethereal Nathan is just I don't know like fades a little bit uh, as her meditative uh, it's mindset is disrupted a little bit uh if she were there she'd definitely have a story but uh at this moment it's just bringing up some very bad memories <laughs> as you as your ethereal form shudders Ikichiwe lets one corner of his mouth tick upwards again in that annoying, knowing way and completely disregards you, turning towards Zizi and Kichika expectantly. Well, I I got a I got a I got a story. By all means. Um this is a story of a young person um, who uh, lost um, their, their family. And so they made a new one. And in a very literal sense, they took some, uh, a, a beaded, beaten up raccoon on like this side of life. Um, and gave it a new a new body, and then the raccoon um, turned around and um, <laughs> saved that person's uh, life. And um, mm -hmm. since uh, it wasn't exactly um, following the rules. Um, you know, bringing bringing a near dead creature back to life, um, that that person um, had to go on a journey. Um, I and like this story, but so far you're not telling a story; you're summarizing a story. Uh oh. <laughs> This would be so much easier if I could just show it. Um, so uh, <laughs> uh, ZZ, um, who is used to telling stories, like is a like it's their job on the street. So like, but they're always with tops who does like projections. Um, so ZZ very nervously uh, tells the story of like with characterization and all of the big motions um, of how they ended up uh, in in this city and so, where they're at now. I will tell you, you have the chance to, uh, you can, you have a choice. Yes. You can make a performance check or you can tell the story. Uh, I'm going to make a performance check because I am sorry, but I do not have the energy to tell this story. <laughs> um, so yeah. That's charisma or spirit, whichever is higher, assuming you have ranks in performance. Copy that. And it is uh, success number eight. Okay. Charisma or spirit. Pretty sure my charisma, but just me talking to myself. Sorry, y'all. One, two, okay, you're three. all good. I got one, two. That one cancels out. And a 12. Reroll the 12. I got a one <laughs> on that reroll. That's fine. It's still a success. So I got one, two, three, four successes. <clears throat> he listens. 
he doesn't say another word while you're telling the story. And at a certain point, however, he will ever so slowly, languorously, and gracefully pull up his own kneesy and turn a part of it towards you. And you will see a projection of a raccoon dancing with you and doing the normal things that tops would do. You have all the makings. When you're finally done, he waits, looking at you approvingly. You have all the makings of a wonderful storyteller. I can't wait to hear the next. And he smiles again. Next time. If I might offer some constructive criticism, while there is no bad medium for a story, over-reliance on props can lead to uh, problems improvising when the moment arises. But you still told it very well had my attention throughout. I think perhaps I may still be overpaying, but here, you can have this and we can worry about what you owe me later. And he produces a box and hands it to Kichika. Nothing breakable in this box, is there? Not anymore. Grab the box. Open it here or somewhere else. It makes no difference to me where you open it. It could, it makes I was no way difference. too curious. And I opened the box. <laughs> Are you all looking in the box? Oh, yeah. I'm not hiding it. So inside, you see Anisi. Anisi. And while at first, uh, Kichika might be like, what the fuck? You see immediately that it is broken. The screen is destroyed. Um... It's been waterlogged. It's clearly corroded. It spent time in salt water. Barely legible on it is an engraving. Sakari, to five good years. Zahatita. And as you're looking... Actually, yes, go ahead. Uh, can I um, pick up the the Nisi and see if I can, if there is any way I could salvage any information out of it? <laughs> you can make me a cybernetics check difficulty 12. Okay. All right. Well, um, while ZZ is looking it over... Um, Mithin has recovered a little bit and is just keeping an eye out for any pending danger. What you see is as your as your companions turn to the box and are looking at it, there's a brief shadow at the corner of your vision, and Akichi Web bows specifically to you, Nithin. And is gone. Hey, so many questions. Mm -hmm. And then he, he just disappears or? He bows mm -hmm. and there is a sharp wind. And his entire figure dissipates as if it were made of smoke. Oh, okay. 
Hmm. Cool. So we're, we're dealing with a smoke man. Lovely. A coyote. <laughs> they do that. I've never met a coyote. Never mind. Uh, t- Actually, there is a uh, coyote's paw print where he was standing. I feel some sort of innate adversarial <laughs> nature between me and Akichu, and I can't tell what it is. <laughs> is is there any way that I can, based on like the, I don't know, spiritual signature or whatever, kind of determine what he was or what he was doing? Because you have Hawk's eyes up, and we are coming to the end of that hour. Honestly, we're probably mm-hmm. past it, but I'm not going to make you re-roll now and be that kind of dick. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me take a quick look at the skills we have, and then I will tell you what you can roll. What are you specifically trying to discern? Like, my, uh, Trying to discern, like, was he just projecting, or is he something other than human you can make me investigation skullduggery or knowledge folklore Oof. uh all of them are three so i'm gonna go investigation do you have ranks in it i do not <laughs> then that leaves you with uh Perception or wisdom, whichever is lower. Uh oh, with that, yeah. So it'd be uh no, that'd be four actually. Um, because with the hawkeye, my perception would have increased. So uh the lower then is my wisdom at four. This time I will let you use perception. Mm. Oh, that seems okay. like a good extra sensory. Mm. One twelve, so and then a two. So was that two, three successes? That's still two. Two. Okay. Yep. So you, in watching him, you don't know how he disappeared. It wasn't a projection. You're pretty sure of that. And you're pretty sure that if he was a spirit, you it would have felt different. He was human. And you don't know how he vanished. You've Mm. never seen it before. You don't know how he vanished, but he was probably human. Okay. Probably. He did have a bunch of... He did have... um, Like most in Cahokia, he did have elements of tech on his suit that might have helped. He did have a mask on one shoulder of a coyote, a mask of a crow on the other. Um, Such things sometimes have tech or spiritual significance. You're not really sure. Hmm. Definitely going to mold that over. So uh, I got three 12s and then I re-rolled them and then I got like less than. So... (laughs) That's three twelves and three successes. So that's still six successes overall. Same number of successes. <laughs> yeah, if you so, if you roll a twelve, no matter what, that's two successes by itself. It's two or three, depending. Yeah. Well, one of those twelves, I rolled another twelve. That's three, and you re-roll. So actually, that's two, two. It's it's a lot of successes. After you get <laughs> above <lot>. five, <laughs> after you get above five, it kind of stops mattering. <laughs> okay. Me. Unless it set the difficulty to 13, which does happen and which I clearly should have done. <laughs> um, so when you... You can't help yourself. Your little grabby hands get it. And you can see this is dead. This is so fucking dead. This should not work. 
this should never work again. This will never turn on again. That's what any coward would say. <sighs> Click. You pop it open and you go to work and you slap Kichika for coming close. <laughs> I just want to see okay. it. Go away until I'm done. Yeah, but it's cut the things on it. Go oh, steps away. And um, you break out every tool in your kit. Like Kichika, you can see her rotate through literally every every tool she has on her. Like she rips open the desiccant powder. She tinkers with this and tosses it aside. And like there are tools and packets and all manner of everything and you're not really sure where she got some of these parts and by the end of it it looks like she's built an additional casing around the back of it but it turns on and it's flickering (laughs) yes but it's on now most of the data disappeared in the time that it was off because even in Cahokia, data doesn't stay forever when the device is off. But you do see that this was, you can tell, you get Sakari's day calendar. You get a couple of messages. Um, you get one from Zaha Tita claiming she would be by later tonight. You recover one from Ishja uh, politely requesting payment um for the last job you get one from an unknown uh number suggesting that a business competitor had a problem securing a certain type of wood and so will not be able to do the job in the cheesy district and that that job is now open and available for anyone who does have the right kind of wood um other than that you find a few others uh but you got way more out of this than you should have been able to because zz's awesome (laughs) soul duggery and cybernetics uh i am gonna uh interrupt in here real quick we did get a bonus uh from the audience i don't know how that's going to apply uh, I know that there are mechanics in Coyote and Crow in which we can adjust the die. Yes. Uh, what I will call that is a negative two to a future roll. Okay. Awesome. A negative two difficulty. A negative Fantastic. two to the success number, making it easier. All righty. But thank you, Stormwolf92, for that. No. Ah. Thank you. Nathan, you're going to have to either spend or break the connection. Mm. I think with the, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to withdraw. Uh, I think that I've got to maybe do some research see if I can find anything on how uh, Akichue just vanished. Uh, And I need to collect myself before they returned. Uh, Now to do that, I have to make a another charisma check or is that what do you uh, to do which uh, to return. Uh, n- I'm just going to say that you return. Oh, okay. All right. I'm not going to complicate this particular thing. We've got sure, other sure, things sure. to worry about. Yep. So, yeah, I'm going to return and spirit flies back to where I'm meditating and take a deep breath and oh. just sit there for a while as I all over things but go ahead <laughs> i was just gonna ask the place that we met akitsue 
was this like a like does this place look like it's just like a random meeting location does this look like somewhere that so it looks like frequents? the outside of a residence um <clears throat> uneasy knows that uh this is kind of where he holds court this is basically where he is when he wants to make himself available um this is the place you come and you'll leave a note for him uh looking in the window you see that it was a residence but it's very clearly empty like there's some furniture but nobody's lived here in years I see so uh, other than that in this room is there anything else like that's of interest are there there's no other people it's just mm -hmm. us at this point right it is an open air courtroom it is an open air courtyard there is an archway that you come through there is no roof there is an old fountain that is no longer flowing on which he was and now there is a coyote's paw print in the ground uh we should we should go because i really want to show neaton that i fixed this one second i would like to see if uh this paw print continues in any particular direction or if it is just a paw print um it's a paw print that looks as if it was heading out the door the same door we're about to go through the same or... door that leads back out onto the street okay. at this point it's probably too late what are you what are you looking at why are you on the ground Coyote paw print. Okay. Well, presumably that has something to do with the Kichue, right? He's a coyote. So well, yeah, but yeah. I mean, you don't want to know more? You're not curious? I Guy just brought... poofs in front of us and you're just like, yeah, that's fine. I brought this back to life. Do you know how hard that was? <laughs> Literally, no. It looked really complicated, but I don't touch electric. You saw what well, I was just close to the projector and it started going on the fritz. Okay. You saw what happened to my niece. I, I've made my piece a long time ago that I can't do anything with electronics. Okay, Every then... time Kichi was hands kind of come near the screen, it flickers. Yeah, I I yank it away, a <laughs> far away from Kichi. Uh, 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 I'm okay. You stand five steps behind me, and you got long legs, so like your le your your steps, not mine. And okay. ZZ heads out the door. <laughs> okay. Uh, before before uh, ZZ heads out the door, I'm just going to um, reshape the paw print uh, to be in the shape of a crow. So I'm going to use one of the, the toe pads to become a head and like two of the other ones to become wings uh, and just put little bird feet um, <laughs> with like a little face that's going like, hmm, and then I'm going to head out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so you get back, I assume you get back on the Yutsu train heading back towards, um, where, uh, Nathan stays. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you get back, it's pretty quick. Like I said before, it took him maybe 20 minutes to get there the first time. It'll take him maybe 20 minutes to get back. Um, and you're still feeling very not at your best because of reasons mm. um but they do make it back uh welcome back i trust everything went well were you able to meet with the kichue deception yeah. check <laughs> ah. <laughs> That means all of you make deception checks. Oh, okay. Copy that. Uh, because yeah. deception is both lying and picking up on lies. Oh. Uh, 
Hey. Hey. Uh, one success. Three successes. <laughs> This bitch so, lying. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got, a, okay, a twelve is two, and then you roll again to to see mm-hmm. if you get a third, right? Yep. Okay, so I have three successes. <laughs> Very blatantly lying. Both of you are like, weren't you listening on the comm? Why are you acting like you don't know? Yeah, we, I, I doctored it as best I could. You didn't jostle it, did you? I listen. I can. I've told you if it. You can hear it, it coming working? out of her niece. Yeah. So it does. It's working. So why? Why are you being weird? Never mind. What was in? What was in the box? <laughs> okay. So. First of all, it was a Nisi. It was a waterlogged Nisi, and it looked like it'd been messed up for a really long time. But, 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 look what I did. <laughs> it looks like it's a Frankenstein monstrosity. Oh. <laughs> Who did it belong to? Uh, Zakari. Yeah. Zakari? Hmm. Yes. There are messages on it. Uh, one from Z- uh, Zahitita. <laughs> Thank you. Zahitita. Yeah. Zahitita. Um, and she, um, she says she will be by later. And then there's one for from a uh, who wants uh, well, he was asking very nicely to get paid. Eastja. Hey, Eastja. My bad. Uh, is asking very nicely to get paid. And then an unknown number um says that the job in the cheese. Chise District um, opened up because his competitor lost wood. Yeah. Oh, wait. I wasn't able to read that. Never mind. <laughs> lost lost his wood? No, no. He didn't have the right wood. And so... Uh, oh, yes. The job's open for anyone who has the right wood. Forgive, forgive a, <laughs> a woman for a dirty mind. Uh... <laughs> What? Nothing. You know, wood. Just you. Feel, yeah. Never mind. Eh, of course, Kichika get it. Anyway, oh, yeah. I brought <laughs> this back to life. So Kichika, stay away from it. Um, I'm feeling like a freaking god. I gotta show. I gotta show tops. <laughs> So when you burst into the kitchen, Tops is standing there very proudly holding up the remnants of the toaster, which <sighs> has been converted into a uh, very primitive but possibly functional toaster oven. Ooh. Oh. Good boy, Tops. Look what I did. <laughs> and- <laughs> <laughs> He, yeah, we'll just compare notes back and forth, and I'm like on my niece just trying to understand them. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, but this is what I so I took out the I uh, took out the screwdriver, and then yeah. why yeah, not yeah, the yeah. hex wrench? Um, well, because I didn't have it with me. I only had the my the stuff in my pouch. You had the hex wrench last. Where'd you put it? He rifles through uh, attachments. One is. There's like a banana in there, but not a hex <laughs> wrench. We're gonna need another. This is why we can't have nice things. We need an inventory. I've been telling you for a while. We need an inventory just so we can keep track of who has what. And also, I saw that banana. Why do you have a banana? I told you no more food. It gums up the mechanics. Tops hisses and scampers away to the highest shelf pops the banana and chews aggressively in your direction. Fine. That's your dinner tonight. Yeah. (laughs) Just gonna go back out front. (laughs) Done arguing with Tops right now. I love the idea of you just like, you and your cybernetic raccoon like both kind of showing each other your (laughs) your cool thing that you made. I'm just very yeah. proud of each other. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. <laughs> it's very cute. Thank you. 
But I, I rejoin you guys kind of pouting, but also still kind of marveling at the fact that I brought this thing back to life. Um, I want, can I look at the body um, to see if I noti notice any, uh, like the original body, not the attachments that I added, uh, to notice that, to see if I notice any like engravings or anything on it? Like, you already saw that there were yeah. the engravings. Um, okay. But if you make a computer's check, I will maybe give you some more information about it. Hmm. My, okay. So do we think this um, unknown number asking for a wood injection um, might be like, you know, a secret code or something? Like maybe it's like, I know it sounds like a very inappropriate email, but, or message, but could it be like... Make an investigation check. Okay. Uh, I Success got... number seven. I got uh, three, well, I got four successes, but I also got a one, so I got three successes. So, you can tell, just looking at the body of this thing, that someone threw it like hard um you can tell exactly where it hit first and then it bounced over onto the screen and then it bounced and that was when it started cracking and the water just burst in somebody threw it probably in like a river okay i got six successes Ooh. there were notes of debt from a kichiwa that were pretty unspecific in that box of stuff in Nizaka's apartment. That's what you think this is. Got it. And, okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, I will file that away for in my Sneaky coyote file. Well, I don't know about um, y'all, but this got hooked real hard. Um, and that's when the screen cracked and then the water got in. So someone threw it um, by the river and it crashed on almost everything in its path. And I still brought it back. <laughs> yeah. That's... Honestly, I mean, I don't, I literally know nothing about what you did, but it sounds impressive and you're proud of it. And therefore, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Do you get a hug? No, because that would mean he'd get close to, um, cl close to the tech and I don't want him to break it. Um, since you're such a, uh, really awesome, uh, cybernetics wizard, uh, do you think do you think there's a way of recovering that unknown number? Well, yeah. <laughs> Can, would you would you yes. be able to do it? Uh, uh, I just, you know, I have some free time and I might be free to, you know. Uh, okay. I can try. I know somebody who has wood. These are all old old messages. They are time date stamped like 10 years ago. Yeah, I don't think they need the wood anymore, but we can figure out who supplied it. Yeah, you know, maybe they're involved. Yeah, okay, hang on. Um, so I'm going to connect my Nisi to this thing uh, with like, like a hard, like a hard connection, not a Wi-Fi connection, uh, and try and transfer like the number so i can just look it up on mine without stressing this little boy out give me do you want to use your negative two here uh yes yes i do <laughs> so Thank give you. me a uh success number 11 cybernetics check mm -hmm. oh, that's what i thought yep mm, okay just double checking my numbers before I roll this. 
And this is where our luck runs out. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Okay, I could do this. We're cool. Can you? Are can you, you really? Oh, challenge <laughs> accepted. Hang on. I got this now. <laughs> I, wish, I genuinely wish I was. there was a way I could help, but there's literally nothing I can do. Oh, go ahead. Give it, it a try. I invite you. Infinitely no, just worse. Gonna, like, break stuff. It's not at all my gremlin nature calling to uh listen. <laughs> okay. I so... asked for this. So <laughs> <laughs> So I got a 12. Yes. Nice. And I rerolled it and I got a three. So I got two successes on a skill check with an eleven difficulty. Okay. So you think the spirits and God and <laughs> the moccasing version of Joe Pesci. Uh, <laughs> you think Ischia himself for the luck that you had this because you go through to get the number and as you grab the information off of the Dazo, the Nisi, Sakari's Nisi, bursts into flames. <laughs> I didn't do it. No, that that one was all me. I figured I kind of knew that was going to happen. So. And you can hear it. Like you can hear the. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you hear Nathan. a sco <laughs> You hear a scolding from the other room. Look, I got my information and you were busy. So you do have a number. Woot. Um, so I'm going to look up that number in the directory. You don't know? Um, it's not there. Um, what's, uh, what's the number, Neasy? 8675309. I really hope you know that's what? not sure. a very Why real not? number. <laughs> Sure, why not? Uh, but <laughs> yeah, no, there's no num there's no name attached to it in the registry. It's not in the white pages. Um there's the nothing about this number. You, there's... Could this be one of what do they call uh, burners? Uh a number that was used only once but then discarded. Okay. There should yeah. still be some kind of registry information. The hmm. only people who have access to things like this are people in certain kinds of jobs, uh, people who work with the government, people who work with the Suyata, people who work in places where they can scrub the number and the registry information. Yeah, so there's no registry, there's no like history to this number which means scary people are um, involved with this number, like government scary people. Hmm. Um, what I about know whose number it is. organized crime? I know whose number it is. You do? It's Kichue's number. Wait. Don't are call it. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Wait, are you like are you sure are you doing like some are you doing the conspiracy theory thing cuz No, I'm serious. Okay, first of all, the Mazazook thing was a good idea. Okay? Secondly, no. The message about the wood was clearly about a debt. Who do we know that had a debt to Akichiwe, mm. Sakari? That number is is Akichiwe trying to collect on that debt. But wouldn't it be registered under, I don't know, Akichiwe's like, name? You think the information broker, Akichiwe, the one who literally poofed into a puff of smoke in front of us, is going to have a publicly registered number? Yes. For mm. all of his nieces? I don't know. Could you have more than one? I I think Technically, that yes, Kichika is 
in part correct. Uh, someone with his uh, connections is not going to have their information out and available. But it does bring a question that if uh, Akichiwe was messaging uh, Sakari about his own debt, that does not make sense. He wanted to collect. This was a way of getting the collection. He was calling him to say this hey. was what the debt was for this was the information he paid for hmm. okay well i think we should look up the girlfriend um because she said she'd be by later and so she might have been the last person to see um, Sakari alive. Zahatita? Yeah. Zahatita. Mm. Business associate, I, I feel like, but yeah. Well, it is our one of our only remaining leads because this device just brings up many more questions. Well, I also don't want to go back and like accuse the coyote of um you know murder because oh why not i'm sure it'll go very my well intention yeah but it's very useful information to have i would i would like to see 17 um so it's as not as good as you might think <laughs> not for on you. the edge of 17 <laughs> uh it's uh, it's what I told the lieutenant. We are seeking the truth. And we are going to follow the threads of this tapestry until we can see the broader weave. And the next one, it does seem to be uh, Zakari's uh, old friend. Zahatita. Yeah. And she is easily found. Like she has an address. She's easily looked up. Uh, she has a mm -hmm. business address. Like it's all there. She can actually I... doesn't. Sorry, Go ahead. I was going to ask can I look up her financial records to see like how shady she might be? You can find. Banking information isn't like public record in Cahokia. Um, like you could find charitable donations. It ZZ is good enough that I'm not even going to make you roll. Like you can find charitable donations. You can find um, all manner of things. She's just a businesswoman. But she likes to donate to charities and. I immediately distrust wait, this woman. Wait, you said she's a businesswoman. What kind of business is she in? She is, again, this is public record. Uh, mm -hmm. Zizi can just turn it over that she co owned the business with Sakari. Well, mm. uh, she was the co owner of Sakari's business. So that's not a red flag. Um, yeah. Definitely provides to motive. Seems like it. So I think that this is a very strong thread that we should follow. Uh, perhaps in the morning? Yeah, it's been a long day. It's still pretty early in the evening. You think you might oh, be able it? to get a hold mm -hmm. of her. Oh. Well... It's only been a couple hours since this all started. I wasn't sure when it started, actually. <laughs> you wanna... It started at about 4 p.m. That was probably my bad for saying. Okay. <laughs> like right now it's six, maybe seven. You've got some time before Wow, we've that. done a lot in two hours. <laughs> it's a busy day. 
yeah. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Well, I mean, yeah. time, time is, is soup. Soup. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, uh, in that case, let's track her down. Well, you get an just, address. I was going to say, can we give her a call? Well, send, send her a message. Interestingly enough, um, in short order, a couple of things happen. Mm. There's a knock on the door. Not my house. So. Sakan? Uh, uh, Nathan, I think, uh, I think you should come here. Uh, and I will do so. As you come around the corner, Grab something. A couple heavy. of things happens. <laughs> Tops peaks makes loud squeaking noises and shoots out the door and is just gone. Oh, I will definitely be running after Tops. <laughs> so ZZ barrels through without even paying attention and literally scatters two guys. They're big guys, so it's kind of impressive. But Tops is just terrified. And <clears throat> ZZ and Tops run out into the night because I know we're about to lose Casper. Bye! Casper, <laughs> we'll miss you! Bye, ZZ! <laughs> Alright, give me a moment to fix the cameras. Keep going. <laughs> However, there are at first, you only see one. Then you see three men standing behind him. Each of them are large. They're balancing uh, what look like canes on their shoulders, but most canes don't have spikes. It looks like they've taken barbed wire and wrapped them around the end. The one in front says, uh, this is uh, Nathan's place, right? Yes, I am Nathan. Oh, good, good. Uh, you don't need to know my name. Look, we're friends of Eastjas, and he doesn't need your help, all right? Funny that you say you are friends, considering we are on this investigation on his behalf. Oh, well, that was before. He's changed his mind. Hmm. And would it be you who did the mind changing? Me? God, no. I, I'm i just a normal upstanding citizen telling you that you should probably leave my friend alone. You know, you're old. It looks like if you fell, you'd break a hip. And we'd hate for that to happen. We respect our elders. You obviously respect us very much to barge into our homes and I haven't stepped foot with... in your home. I'm threatening you from your doorstep. Very well. Then you can threaten all you'd like with the door in your way. I shut the door. <laughs> as soon as you go to shut the door, he puts his cane out, it clearly tried to keep it open. Mm. I don't think you want to do that, because I don't think we're done with our conversation, and you probably at least want to be done talking before you go closing the door in people's face. Otherwise, you're going to get a, a reputation for being rude, and you don't want that. I would say that it is very rude to threaten oh me i'm an asshole ask anybody mm -hmm. but you don't want to have that happen you might oh, i'm sorry was there was there more that you wanted to say then oh no i just want it clear and uh obvious that y'all are gonna leave uh isha alone and stop looking into this we will take it into consideration Make a deception check. <laughs> uh, it's not going to go well. Believe in you. 
no successes, no critical failures, but no successes. Now, see, I don't believe you. Do you believe her, boys? Of course, and nah. And I really need you to make me believe it because otherwise, I just don't know, you know? I'd like to hmm. walk up if you don't okay. mind. Okay, yeah. No, please. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Who are these? So these are two large men, you said? There's one in front and two behind. Got it. Hi. How's it going? Who the fuck are you? Oh, that doesn't matter. You seem to be threatening this very kind old woman. That's not really all that nice, is it? Again, I'm going to ask, who the fuck are you, and what business is it of yours, what we're doing? Oh, actually, it kind of is uh, my business. Uh, I'm going to reach in my pocket and pull out the deputy papers. I'm going to say, because I kind of work for the constabulary, actually. <laughs> um... So I'm going to ask you the same question. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Make an intimidation check. Uh, intimidation is not a thing on here that I can uh, see. I think it's uh, coercion. Coercion. Yeah. coercion. Okay. Charisma or spirit. In the future, I should really put some points into that. I'm seeming to get really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> You're making an awful lot of use of it. Um, actually, I would like to activate Mother's Voice. Ooh. Um, and I need to remember how that works. <laughs> um, so I need... It is uh, to mind to activate. Do I have to do that even outside of a an encounter? Hang on. I mean, in a way, this is an encounter, but it's like a social encounter. <laughs> this is a social encounter, but uh, a physical one has not started yet. I mean, totally won't start. That's not what this is at all. No. Um, oh, I've, I've got my recurve bow somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I've not been carrying any weaponry. Primary action to mind. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. But do I have to do the two mind? Yes, you have to spend the two mind. Okay, all right. Uh... Now, what are you trying to achieve with this, I'm assuming, coercion check? Yes. So I want them to, first of all, back the fuck up secondly <laughs> tell me who they are and ideally kind of what they're doing here and if possible who they're working for okay um now you then make a dice pool from charisma plus spirit mm -hmm. and convert three of those automatically to critical dice so you already have three successes nice and then roll the rest so three of these are critical dice. Okay. or actually yes already roll them like they were already 12s you already have three successes banked so re-roll them Sick. uh what was the it's, it's standard yeah okay uh so that would be two more successes uh, two of them on the critical. So that is five successes all told. You see immediately the effect your words have on these people. Who the fuck are you? He puffs his chest and you feel the weight of a mother's voice. You feel the big sister and you come out. You feel every auntie and grandmother who has ever scolded you come out in your words as you ask this person who the 
fuck they are. And because of all of that in you, they don't just hear who the fuck are you. They hear who the fuck do you think you are? They hear who the fuck are you trying to be? They hear who the fuck are you trying to be? They hear what are you doing with your life? And they very clearly quail and they feel you can see on their faces that they feel ashamed. They, they, I don't want to say cower because that's not what they're doing, but they are hang dog. They look like three children who have just been scolded. And while they've all got these canes that have been converted to clubs, they're, they're like, they're hanging in loose grips and the guy in front is, well, I'm, 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 I'm Thunra's. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm here to, I'm just doing my job. Didn't want to threaten the old woman. That sounds, it sounds mean. I don't want to be mean. I mean, I make my money being mean, but I, I don't know how it got to this point. Look, it just leave Isha alone and we don't have to, this doesn't have to continue. Who sent you? Fuck you. Hey. I'm sorry. <laughs> you answer the question. I don't wanna, for? she's... <sighs> We work for Zahatiba. Hmm. Well, it seems like you may have, uh, you know what? Tell Zahatita. That we're going to speak with her soon. I, I, I don't want to do that. I know you don't. But your other option is to find another job. Maybe something a little bit more respectable. One where you don't intimidate old women. She was rude. So were you. I know. You can tell that he can't meet your eyes. He's just looking everywhere else. And guess we should probably find another job. I just yeah. Sahatita scares me. And she's you always got work those... with someone who scares you. No, but she pays really well. And I mean, At I guess what we don't really cost need... to you though. <laughs> I never wanted to be in this. I wanted to be a singer. Well, there you go, Thunraz. Like, sing me a little something. He does? It is terrible. Well, you know what? I'm sure that you, if you put your mind to it, you could find a job singing somewhere. You really think so? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I think you should follow that dream. Isn't that so much better than spending your days absolutely just going around what knocking on people's doors and hitting them with spiky sticks? That doesn't sound like a good time. Sometimes we do it in alleyways too. That's not better and you know it. I know. <laughs> Make a charm check. Right. Success number four. <laughs> Me then over here is just Except number four. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just like, when it's not contested, really you when it's not contested, you go up against their mental defense. <laughs> uh, that is three successes. You know what? I'm gonna try. Good. 
you know what? You, when you find your first booking, you come and find me and I will absolutely come and see that show. You will? Absolutely. You promise? I promise. And I genuinely mean it. <laughs> come on, guys. Let's go. All right. Make good choices. Start a band. <laughs> They uh disappear into the night. And I am just gonna turn to Kichika just so impressed. That was masterful. Learn from the best. And who would that be? <laughs> oh, my grandmother. Oh. Yes. She she was a very pleasant woman. I really enjoyed her company when the in the few moments that I got to have with it and with her. Yeah, she was great. And just like that, you find your mental state is uh right back down between Akichiwa and mention of the grandmother and remembering what Mm. the remembering that you served as the death doula for the old woman, putting you back in mind of your family. And in that remembrance, uh, Kichika, you just, you almost see Nathan, close in physically uh, and just a, that dark shadow kind of like pass over um, it does seem more urgent that we speak with Zahatiza but I don't know if I have it in me tonight Kichika, you have the sudden, strong, petty urge. You don't have to do this, but you definitely feel the urge to kind of take this and make it your own, I think. Do you want to tell me a story? I'm not sure what you're asking. <laughs> you feel the words do you want to tell me a story and you feel like you want to say them you don't have to but you do have the urge to take mm-hmm. that and make it your own in this moment if only to show up your apparent new rival. I was just a little child. Um, My grandmother used to tell me a story. A story of Gashcap the Rotund. Gashcap was a mouse. Um, And rather than do the work that was required of him within his family, going around, gathering bits of seeds and building up their den, preparing for winter. Gashcap liked to trick the other mice into doing his work for him. Gashcap liked to make others do his bidding. And it worked out really well for him. His prodigious size was a result of that, he was able to grow and grow and grow until he was no longer able to leave their den. 
and as such, everyone else saw Gashcap and saw, and saw him and his magnificent size and thought, well, we must take care of him now. He's been here for so long. He's so large. He's the oldest of us, the wisest. He must be taken care of. We must continue working for him. Until a small gray dormouse named Nipozu. Nipo didn't really do very much, like to spend their time outside, wandering the trees, and genuinely enjoying themselves. And they took care of themselves and uh, themselves and, and their own. And when Gashcap found out that one of the mice was not contributing to his prodigious growth. Well, he didn't like that. So he sent the other mice to try to force Nipo to contribute. Eventually, Nipo relented and joined in with Gashcap's forces to help him grow, losing everything that he loved. Two years spent that way. Two years spent gathering and working, and this little dormouse just had but a few little bones remaining on its body, no fat, barely enough energy to keep moving, until a small dewdrop fell on their nose, and they saw a rainbow refracting on that dewdrop. And they were reminded of all of the beautiful things that they used to do before Gashcap. This thing that Nipo had thought was the way of the world, the way that things should be, and what the other mice had decided, that this is the way that it must be, and this there is no other way. It was wrong. And Nepo decided that it was time that they do something about it. So with a few like-minded mice, they banded together, and overthrew Gashcap and formed a world where each mouse had more than enough to live and prosper happily. And was a beautiful story. Thank you. It is one that I will remember and tell when it is appropriate. Though that does bring a question of why that story? I don't know. It was, uh, it was an old bedtime story. Mm. And my grandmother used to tell me it because she wanted me to be like Nipa, to not just acquiesce to what is expected, but rather work with the people around me to build a world that's better, to, to do things that are more than just all of this. And 
by ourselves, we can't do that. Nepo was one mouse. But it wasn't Nepo that overthrew Gashgat. It was all of them together. Hmm. And but the point is... Well, I know we just met, and you know, we've just started <laughs> I met, this. I met, I, I met you. I know, how but many, nineteen years but ago, properly, but properly, yes. and actually getting to know each other. Yes. Hmm. We have each other, and as a team. Those gash caps of the world better look out. <laughs> Your grandmother was extraordinary. In the little time that I knew her, uh, she was had wisdom beyond what I could have hoped to have obtained one day your your grandmother knew a young woman and this young woman was wily vibrant alive the pride of her family and She loved her family, loved being a part of something greater, something bigger. Admittedly, she was a bit of an adrenaline junkie as well. Always going out and looking for where the action was. which became a problem when she also wanted to start her own family. Because she was never one to sit still. She would not be content to lay around all day and be doted on all throughout her pregnancy, her first. She continued to chase that thrill, that excitement, getting into scraps and putting herself and her pregnancy in danger. She was foolish. Because that lifetime of thrill seeking caught up with her. She was injured severely and lost the child and her ability to make a family ever since. And she not only lost a future family, but her family her parents, siblings blamed her for her loss. And they turned their backs. So she wandered. 
<laughs> a hug. Uh, if if you wish. I'm asking if you want one, silly. Uh, yeah, if you wish. Give you a hug. Thank you. It's it's very nice. I haven't had one in a long time. Not a real one. Wow. But <clears throat> anyway. Just goes to show that uh, you should appreciate what you have and honor it when you have it, lest you have to honor it when it's gone. With that in mind. Hmm. Well, it is getting late. Perhaps we should relax and then, or actually, now, now that I think of it, we should probably go find our friend Zizi and where they've run off to. I'll, I'll go find them. You get some rest. Hmm. Okay. You look, quite frankly, you look exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, certainly wish I had that young woman's vitality. That's for sure. Well, I'm sure you've got some adventures in you yet. <laughs> I'd like to think so. But please go take care of our friend and please come back if uh, you wish to stay. I have spare. Oh room. gosh, no! I have to go find my sister. She has been. <laughs> you alone. did just leave her with that. that yeah, I, I honestly, it came into my mind about an hour ago, and it's kind of been back there. And I've just been now is my opportunity to go do that. So we're gonna go do that. But there's also because you can still hear the raccoon nearby. Like you can hear, uh, ZZ and Tops just around the corner you're sure um but there's also the matter of the old woman who just sent thugs to beat your ass mm -hmm. hmm. fine easy and we will figure out our next step Yeah, I uh, managed to send those thugs away, but somehow I don't think that this is going to work as well uh, mm. the next time. Someone that's a little bit more um, strong-minded and with fewer dreams of becoming a singer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that poor boy. Yeah. those poor listeners yeah mm -hmm. you know what following your dreams it's a beautiful thing and with that i think we are going to call it for the evening i will go first this time in that i am logan bose i have been your story guide i can be found at uh logan m bose on uh instagram akichiwe on twitter and can we give a hand to our lovely two players here? Because those were fantastic stories. And I am just in awe. Like, did you make that up off the top of your head, Bo? I wrote down, I had an idea for what I wanted the story to be. I wrote down names. I found some on the, the Coyote and Crow app, which you can download at any app store. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, I got some some names. And then, no. uh, <laughs> and then from there, it was all the details were, were made up. Uh, yeah, that was fantastic. 
very well done. And uh, go ahead and tell our lovely viewers where they can find you guys. Well, okay, I will go first then. Uh, <laughs> hello, everyone. You, my name is Bo. Uh, I have been playing Kichika, and you can find me all over the internet at Dorky Teacher, uh, except for on Twitch, where it is just Dorky Teacher. Uh, where tomorrow I'm going to be playing some Elden Ring, uh, and then the day after that, probably going to be playing some more Elden Ring. Uh, but you can see all sorts of things like uh, yesterday I did a stream where I was wearing a maid outfit and that was really fun uh, I saw the so pictures you, on Twitter yeah. yeah, they're on Twitter the VOD's still there if you want to see it um, yeah other than that I play all sorts of TTRPGs and things um, so if you want me in your game hit me up fantastic and I am G Mistress Winter thank you all for watching this evening uh, you can find me on all the socials as G Mistress Winter. Uh, in December, I am excited to tease that I will be starting my own streaming channel, uh, Mistress Winter's Court. Uh, more information to come on that. So just keep following my Twitter and you'll see and all of our upcoming stuff. Uh, so I will be, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me starting up uh, season two of Graffitied Hearts, uh, the Monster Hearts story that I host on Heroes and Hooligans in January. So keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, thank you all. Excellent. Until next time, everyone. I'm going to